All right, guys, welcome back to part two. Um, I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible, but there's a lot of things we have to cover. Um, this is going to be the second video in the horror environment series where we take this flooded grounds asset, this map we have, and we're going to kind of darken it up and make it more into a nighttime scene. Um, and if you guys haven't already, go check out the first video where I show you guys how to actually import this scene. Um, it is a free asset. You guys can get it on the Unity Asset Store. Um, in the first video, I show you guys how to do that. Um, as well, in the first video, we deleted our post-processing folder that came with this asset because we're going to be replacing it with the one that comes with Unity. So if you guys don't know how to do that, feel free to jump back to that other video. I will link it in the description. Um, but basically, you're just going to delete that folder. And we're going to go up to Window, Package Manager, and our post-processing. I already have it installed, but go ahead and install the latest version of post-processing that comes with the Unity registry. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to go to our uh, multi-sampling, multi-sample anti-aliasing. Make sure that is turned off in our camera here. Make sure we're on our camera. And we need to add a layer. So let's go ahead and add a layer. And let's type in post. It's all going to be one word, processing. Make sure both P's are capitalized. That's very important. Make sure it's spelled just like that. All right, now let's go back to our camera and we're gonna make this layer our post-processing layer on our camera. And let's go ahead and add a component. So type in post or post-processing, whatever, it should populate up. And we're gonna first go to post-processing layer. Now we wanna make sure that our layer is also post-processing. That'll get rid of that uh, error there. And for our anti-aliasing mode, I found that uh, sub-pixel anti-aliasing looks pretty good. Uh, we can go ahead and uncheck exclude skybox and that should give us a little bit more fog. Um, you guys can play around with these, but I found that uh, subpixel does look the best. And we want to make sure that our stop NAN pr uh, propagation is also checked as well. All right, so let's go ahead and add another component and let's add the post processing volume. Uh, make sure that is global is checked um, so that it will affect the entire scene here. And for the weight, um, I just put, you know, put it up to one. Uh, if you put it to half, then whatever we do will, you know, everything will be cut in half. It'll be like half as effective. Uh, so just keep that at one there. And let's click on new profile. That's going to populate with our camera here. As you can see, um, our camera is going to be, oh, I got two of them. Let me delete this one here. This is one I was working on earlier. All right, cool. So we're going to use this guy as our camera. Um, just to drag that in there just to make sure. All right, and let's go ahead and add an effect. So the first effect we wanna add, so we're gonna go to Unity and we're gonna add Ambient Occlusion. All right, so before I mess with that, I'm gonna move the uh, first person controller to a little bit of a better area just so we can actually see the effects that take place. Um, let's go probably about right here. Um, components, uh, game object, there we go, game object, align with view. Okay, it's been a while since I've done that. And let's go ahead and just make sure that it's uh, zeroed out there. Check our game. That's about a good spot. Let's just bring it down a little bit. All right, right about there should be good. Perfect. Okay, so now whatever effects we do, we'll be able to see a little bit better um, in our scene there. All right, so under ambient occlusion, uh, we are going to turn on the intensity. And let's make the intensity about, let's see, 1.5. As you can see, changing intensity kind of gives us a little bit more shadows there. Um, you guys don't have to follow along. You can do whatever you want. I just found 1.5 looks good there. Uh, thickness, I found that 0.5 works pretty well. Um, color, we can leave the same. Ambient only, leave that. Let's go ahead and add another effect. We're going to go to Unity and Bloom. Uh, Bloom is kind of like a highlights. It's going to make certain things glow and certain things pop out a little more. So it's kind of cool to use Bloom. Um, so under Bloom, um, let's turn the intensity up a little bit. Let's make it about 1.5. Um, these you're not really going to be able to see until our scene is actually dark. So it's going to make like the little like 
uh, puddles kind of have a little glow to them as if there's like moonlight shining on them and stuff. So it's gonna make like shiny things kind of like pop out more, which is kind of cool. Uh, the threshold, let's keep it around uh, three quarters, 0.75. Uh, the soft knee, I found about one works pretty good. Um, that did brighten up a little bit. Let's maybe make that 0.5. We can always mess with that later. Um, diffusion, I'd say about five works pretty good for that. Um, you guys don't have to mess with anything else here. Uh, we can always come back to these later, but let's go ahead and add another effect. Let's go to Unity and Color Grade. And this is going to probably be one of my favorite uh, effects here just because um, it's going to make our scene kind of well, you'll see. It'll, it'll give it that like darkness vibe to it, which is really cool. Um, so on our color grade, uh, the best thing we can do right now is turn on mode to Aces. And as you can see, that's like the biggest difference so far. Aces was actually developed by the movie industry, and it's what gives those movies kind of a high quality professional feel. As you can see, it like really darkened down our contrast, made things a lot just overall better looking. Um, as you can see, like that doesn't look very good and bring it to aces and it gives it kind of that IMAX feel. It's really professional. It's really awesome. Uh, for the temperature, let's bring it down to about negative 50. Um, for our tint, we can leave that the same post exposure. Um, I think around negative two was what I was using. And as you can see already, like that just looks 10 times better, more like a horror game. And we're not even like halfway done yet. All right, so for our saturation, I found about negative 10 works pretty good. Our contrast, we can bring that down to, bring it up, sorry, to about 2.5. Um, and let's see here. I think that looks pretty good. Um, color filter, what we can do is we can maybe add a little bit more of a blue i'm actually really colorblind guys <laughs> i don't know if you knew that already but uh you know if i do something that just looks super weird please don't follow it and do do something that looks better but um i'm gonna try to go for like a kind of a darker almost nighttime moonish blue i think yeah this is gonna be a hard one for me uh, maybe maybe even like right there looks a little darker um, you can always bring down the intensities. Like, that's really dark. I might actually use that. Um, that might be too dark, though. Um, you know what? Let's try it. Let's try that. That that looks pretty good. Um, we'll keep it there for now, and we can always adjust it later. Um, let's add another effect, and let's add some grain to this. So the grain is going to give it, obviously, you know, a little bit of grainy feel, kind of more of a horror vibe. Um, the intensity, let's put this around 0.3. Um, make sure colored is on. Um, as you can see, if it comes up, you can, I don't know if you guys can tell, but like I get super grainy. Um, so I think 0.3 is good. Um, size, let's bring it to keep it at one. And uh, luminance, uh, 0.8 is good for luminance, I think. Cool, let's add one more effect and we're gonna add a vignette. All right, so for our vignette, our mode is gonna keep at classic. Let's make sure that's classic. Our color is gonna be checked. Um, center, we want that checked as well. So we make sure our vignette's in the center. And now our intensity, uh, let's see. Let's try about, uh, as you can see, the outsides of the screen get a little darker. Um, I like that. I think 0.4 looks pretty good. You guys can always mess with that as well. Um, for our smoothness, let's keep that at point, uh, point 0.1, 0.2 or 0.1. It shouldn't make too much of a difference there. Um, the roundness, I might bring that down a little bit to like 0.75. Uh, maybe, actually, uh, 0.8. Um, I might bring that intensity up a little bit. Let's make that, yeah, I think 0.5 looks pretty good there. Um, and for the rounded, we want that checked as well. Um, actually, yeah, that actually brings it up quite a bit. So let's bring that intensity back. Um, it kind of like takes away the player's like peripheral, peripheral vision a little bit, which I think looks really cool. Um, 
All right, I think that looks pretty good so far. Let's go ahead and just play this and see how it looks. Yeah, that's actually really, really dark. <laughs> um, yeah, that might be too dark. As you can see, um, for when we add fog, that might that might just be too dark. Um, so let's go back. Let's go back in there a little bit. Let's go back to our uh, our color filter here and let's maybe lighten that up slightly. Um, Let's see here. I'm just messing around a little bit. You guys can do whatever you want. Let's try. Yeah, maybe something like that. I think that looks pretty good. Bring it down a little bit more. Yeah, something like that. Um, as you can see, we might need a little bit more fog. So we can go up to, uh, if I remember how to do this, uh, window. Uh, rendering and lighting. Uh, let's go down to our environment. Click on fog. Oh, look at that. That's so much better. Um, the color of our fog, I kind of want to make that kind of blue, just like our, our uh, color filter over here. Um, maybe a little darker, something like that. Um, density we can change. As you can see, like you can, <laughs> if you want tons of fog, you can do that. I think it was at 0.01, um, maybe 0.04. Ooh, 0.05 is even quite a lot. 0 0.02, 0 0.015. Uh, let's just leave it at point, 0.01. I think that looks pretty good. Um, these I'm going to keep the same. Um, okay, let's go back and try this out. Let's see how this looks like here. Yeah, okay. Um, I am liking that quite a bit more. Uh, it does get rid of those UFOs in the sky. I didn't really like those. Um, we still have some particles going on. We can still see those. It's not super foggy, but it's also not hiding like everything. As you can see, as we get closer to uh, different objects here, the fog does lighten up a little bit. And I don't know if you can see, but this is what our bloom does. As you can see, these like puddles on the ground, they're like really lighting up and they're really kind of glowing as almost we have, as if we have like a moon. Um, and I think part three of this video, I actually might add a moonlight, um, maybe a, uh, a light uh, rotating light in this lighthouse over here if I can even find it <laughs> there there it is okay so yeah we might throw a light in that lighthouse in part three and maybe uh, throw a moon up in the sky it's almost so dark I, I, dark I can't see where I'm going but I think that looks a lot better guys um, feel free to hit the like button subscribe for more and uh, I will see you in the next tutorial peace